This is the all-new BMW M5. It's the first time the M division has made a proper full-fat hybrid saloon. And it's also the most powerful M5 ever made. And it could be the quickest accelerating M car of all time. And in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. BMW M cars have been getting crazier and crazier over the years. Just look at the way the M3 changed since the 1980s. The original E30 was obviously a sporty car, but it looked fairly subtle. However, the new G80 looks like it belongs in a cartoon, especially with those giant toothy grills. And it's exactly the same with the M5. The first E28 M5 looked like a normal 5 Series with some nice wheels, but the latest cars have crazy body kits, massive wheels, huge intakes and giant exhaust pipes. If you like all this stuff, then you'll absolutely love the new G90 M5, because it's definitely the most extreme looking M5 ever. The basic silhouette is very similar to the new 5 Series and i5 Saloon, but almost every body panel is different. The front bumper has been completely redesigned. Now, there's a massive intake under the double kidney grills with vertical bars in the center. There are extra intakes under the headlights to help cool the brakes. And there's a new splitter to produce a little extra downforce at the front. The wheel arches are much wider too, just like on the new M2 with its body kit inspired by retro racing touring cars. The new M5 sits lower on new wheels and modified suspension. And the back is completely different from a regular 5 Series as well. And there's a large diffuser and a lip spoiler to smooth the airflow around the back end of the car. And you can't have a proper M car without four massive exhausts, can you? To be clear, BMW hasn't officially revealed the new M5 yet. These images that you're looking at have actually been put together by our team of in-house experts. They've scoured through spy photos of official M5 prototypes. They've also used official teaser images from the new car. Plus, they've used their own insider knowledge to create this design. Now, these are the same people who predicted what the new Lamborghini Rivelto would look like. And as you can see, they got that spot on. Anyway, most of the M5's upgrades look similar to what you get on the M2, M3 and M4. But there's one thing on this new M5 that you've never seen on an M saloon car before. Can you tell what it is? Yes, it's the charging flap. The next M5 is a hybrid for the first time ever. Don't worry though, BMW isn't copying Mercedes. There's no danger of the M5 having a four-cylinder engine like the new AMG C63, nor a straight-six hybrid like the forthcoming AMG E63. BMW doesn't like downsizing, so it's sticking to good old-fashioned twin-turbo V8 power. Only this 4.4-litre V8 will also benefit from a large electric motor from the new XM SUV. Speaking of which, that car actually shares loads of bits with this new M5, including its 197 horsepower electric motor, 8-speed automatic gearbox and 4-wheel drive system. But I think there may be a problem. You see, all of that stuff is really heavy, especially the motor and the hybrid batteries. Now, this extra weight can really hurt a car's performance, even if the motor is adding loads of extra power. Now, check out what happened when I raced an XM with 653 horsepower against a much lighter M2, which only has 460 horsepower. Oh, he's got me on the line! <laughs> Here we go now, though. Oh, and then here it goes. Here we go, M2, for the win. The M2 won because it weighs almost 1,000 kilograms less than the XM 
So even though the M2 isn't light at 1,725 kilograms, it's still a lot lighter than the XM, which tips the scales at 2,710 kilograms. And this is a big problem because the new M5 is set to use the same hybrid system as that XM. So it's bound to be heavier than the old car. And one thing about the current generation of M5 is that it is quite a bit lighter than an Audi RS6 and a Mercedes E63S. Still, this new model has to be much quicker than the old, lighter F90 generation M5. In fact, BMW has put a lot of pressure on itself because each new M5 always brings a significant performance upgrade over the previous generation. Just watch this video of me racing every BMW M5 and you'll see what I mean. So then what exactly happened? Well, the F90 won. It completed the standing quarter mile in 11.2 seconds. Meanwhile, the F10 took 12.6 seconds to complete the standing quarter mile. The E60 took 12.7 seconds. The E39, 14.5 seconds. The E34, 14.6 seconds. And the E28 was the slowest. It took 16 seconds to complete the standing quarter mile. What this means is that the standard XM's hybrid system probably isn't going to provide enough grunt. After all, it only produces 653 horsepower, which is quite modest these days. In fact, it's only 18 horsepower more than you get in the current M5 CS. There's one really simple solution though. BMW has to give the new M5 even more power than the XM. Luckily, the M boffins have also developed something called the XM Label Red. This uses the same electric motor as a standard XM, but it has a tuned version of that car's V8 petrol engine. And combined, this car puts out 748 horsepower. That's more than 110 horsepower over what you get in an M5 CS. And this is a good starting point for the new M5, but it doesn't have to stop there. What about future competition or CS models? You see, BMW could replace the Label Red's 585 horsepower V8 with something even better. I'm talking about the 635 horsepower V8 from the M5 CS. Now combine that with a 197 horsepower electric motor and you could be looking at an M5 with around 832 horsepower. That would make the new G90 the most powerful M5 ever by miles. It would also be the most powerful BMW road car of all time. So how quick would this new car be? Well, on paper, it would be in the same league as the AMG GT 63 SE Performance. That car has 843 horsepower thanks to its twin-turbo 4-litre V8 and electric motor. But I've raced this car over a standing quarter mile, and here's how the times compared with the BMW M5 CS, which, remember, is 200 horsepower down on power. Yes, they both did the standing quarter mile in 10.9 seconds. And you can bet that BMW will throw everything at the new M5 to make sure it beats that AMG from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the quarter mile. And one thing it could do is give the M5 a much smaller battery than you get in the XM. Now, this may sound slightly counterintuitive, but the size of a battery doesn't necessarily give you more power. It's a bit like giving your car a bigger fuel tank. The engine doesn't make more power, but you can drive further before you need to fill up. The same goes for hybrid cars and electric vehicles. The XM has a 25.7 kilowatt hour battery, which gives it 50 miles of electric only range, which is actually pretty decent. The AMG GT Hybrid, however, can only do seven miles on a full charge because it has a much smaller six kilowatt hour battery. BMW could fit an equally small battery without sacrificing any power. This would make the whole car lighter, which means it'll accelerate more quickly. And this would certainly make it quicker than the current M5 CS. And if you want to check how quick I time that car from 0 to 60 miles an hour, well, here you go. Boy, Hawks. Looks good, 2.88 seconds. <laughs> yes, you're looking at a new M5 that might accelerate from 0 to 60 miles an hour in around two and a half seconds. But this insane speed isn't the only reason I'm excited for the new M5. 
BMW has also confirmed it's going to build a touring estate version too. These are the official teaser images of a prototype M5 touring, direct from BMW. This will be the first time BMW has made an estate version of the M5 since the E61 M5 Touring from 2007. This new estate will come with the same hybrid system as the standard M5 Saloon, which could make it the most powerful estate car ever made. It's set to go on sale a little while after the standard M5. So, if you're the sort of BMW owner who likes to take the dogs for a spin, you'll have to wait until 2024 to get your hands on a new M5 Touring. But how much are these new cars going to cost? Well, obviously, they won't be cheap. The standard M5 will definitely cost more than the brand new i5 M60. That's currently the most powerful version of the standard 5 series you can currently buy. It has 601 horsepower and costs around £98,000. However, if BMW uses hybrid parts from the XM, then the new M5 could cost somewhere between £100,000 and £150,000, and I'd err on the higher end of that scale. But that's only the beginning. Future competition or CS models with more than 800 horsepower could be even more expensive than the XM label red. And that car costs more than £170,000. You'll have to find out for sure when BMW reveals the new M5 officially later this year. And to make sure you don't miss out when they do, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you'll be alerted when we upload full details of the new BMW M5 Direct from BMW themselves.